Pink. This is such a big thing, right? I want to turn this around and talk a little bit about Steve. Yeah, sports is for everyone. It's yep. the common language between yep. all the and people. Survive the ups and downs of it if you don't have a passion. And Hello and welcome to In The Game, Qatar's first sports podcast. I'm your host, Steve Mackey, and I can't wait to introduce to you some amazing individuals. The podcast is all about the story, our guest story, the highs, the lows, the laughter, the tears. We want to learn what it's like to walk in their shoes, to get an insight into what it takes to overcome those challenges and how to create what is their success story. I, I'm a Sterling fan. I think he does a fantastic job and it was definitely a penalty. Welcome to In The Game, Qatar's first sports podcast, and as always, we've got another fantastic show and another fantastic guest, and I'm going to jump straight into it. Oh, before I do, can you see the background changed? I'm back in the UK with the family after 18 months. Let's hope that this COVID period is going to go away soon. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be back. Um, again, going back to the show, I'm going to introduce, get over and straight away to introduce our guest, Paul. Welcome to the show, and please tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, Steve, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Paul Drasbach. Uh, I'm the founder of Petricor, a football development organization in Cameroon. Um, you know, an avid football fan, player, uh, sports lover, and excited to chat about it today. How did your love of sports come? Before we get on to the, the kind of um, the um, serious stuff, it, well, this is serious stuff, your story. Yeah. What was it when you, it first started with you? Going back to the early ages, what got you involved in sports? Yeah, that's a good question. I, there's so many things, I guess. I mean, I, the first time I kicked a soccer ball, I was, I don't even you know, I was probably three or four, but I just remember from the first time I played, I've just had so much fun every time I play, even, even till today. Uh, so I think it's just the fun of the game. You know, you can learn, you can learn so much about, uh, character development, leadership, teamwork, and all that. But it was just fun for me. And I, I just haven't quit. And I want to provide that to other people. So yeah, I think, I mean, it comes down to just having a good time. And, and you're a young guy, but there's, there must have been a, a kind of when you were that young, it's, it's like sp football, soccer wasn't the biggest game in the States. What kind of drew you to that? Yeah, another good question. So I actually grew up overseas. So I grew up um, in Southeast Asia. And in the Philippines and, you know, some of those countries, soccer isn't as big, but I was surrounded by a really large international community. So I played with uh, Koreans, Australians, um, Germans, all kinds of different people growing up in an international school. So it was just, it was the biggest thing around. Uh, so yeah, it's a good question. I didn't, I didn't grow up in the States, but um, that definitely is growing here as well. Yeah, it is growing. And you've got a great ladies team. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm, I'm a huge fan of that team as well. Yeah, I, 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 so am I. I'm, the ladies' game has come on so much. It's untrue. I say, has it ever not been there? But it's it's come on so much. And the skill, oh, when we got to the semifinals, the, the Americans um, that pipped us in the semifinals, mm -hmm. it was such a brilliant competition, that one. Yeah, so good. Yeah, it was awesome. I was actually in Cameroon, uh, the last Women's World Cup, and it was just, man, we're on the edge of our seats. We loved it. So, so you're, what do you do in business now? You're, you're, you say you're in the States now. We're building up to it slowly but surely, but you're, yeah. we're in the States now. You are. Um, uh -huh. What do you do now? Yeah, so more on a personal level, I actually run a tiny home company as my day job. So it sounds kind of funny, but, you know, it's, it's kind of popular. And, yeah, I build tiny homes. And they, they go down to Southern California and all over the place. And then, you know... I, I work on Petrocor on the side and on the weekends and travel to Cameroon. So as we're growing this thing, the goal is to, you know, jump into it full time. But yeah, a little bit of both right now. And you just said that at, at, at the weekends, you'll travel to Cameroon. No, was, not the weekends. Sorry. I was kidding. I was mean, I was... <laughs> it would take all weekend to get there, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm usually on calls or doing things like this or setting up meetings. You know, I have a, a trip next weekend I'm excited about, but either meeting with donors or partners, uh, lining up things like that. Yeah. 
And, and okay, so you do these tiny homes. When did that transition happen where you looked up and said, hold on a second, I'm going to Cameroon? Yeah, so I mean, thankfully, uh, my boss is a super cool guy and super flexible. So I'm able to travel kind of when when is needed. Uh, for example, you know, next weekend going on a trip, you know, take a day off and make it up later or don't, you know, he's into the whole uh, flexibility thing and, you know, living with purpose and, and having a goal behind what we're doing and spending our time with. Yeah. And, and what really gets me is that you're, you're kind of, you don't have, you could have a, it looks like where you are now, you could have a really nice lifestyle. You're kind of, you, it looks like you've got pretty much sorted from a life perspective, but mm -hmm. you're, you seem like you're pushing forward. You seem like you want to just add back. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, my wife and I talk about it all the time, how thankful we are. So many people are in a rough situation right now. I mean, and growing up in third world cultures, my wife and I have I've seen a lot and recognized that, you know, we're so fortunate and, you know, any way we can give back uh, the better and trying to do the best we can through that is, is an ongoing process. But yeah, we're always pushing for more to try to make the world a little bit better and provide opportunities as, as best as we can. We, we all try, to, and it's one of those things that we all try to do that, right? But there, there's a lot of people that want to try and, and, and we do make a difference is making a difference. It doesn't matter what size, just make that difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. when, when you decided that you were going to go, when did it happen to you when something happened in your life that you said, right, I'm going to Cameroon? How did that all fit into that jigsaw piece? Yeah, good question. Um, so the other co-founder, Jordan Cohn, and I played in university together. And from, from the moment we, you know, went into preseason, we met, kind of became really good friends. And since then, we knew we would use soccer somehow to make an impact. We didn't know exactly what that would look like. Uh, and, you know, nine years later or so, he's been living in Cameroon for a while. He works at an international school there. And he gives me a call and says, hey, uh, I've been coaching here for, I mean, I already knew he had been coaching, but he said, hey, some of the coaches and some of the federation uh, folks sat him down and said, Hey, can you help us create some structure and some framework around the youth development pathways and leagues and just kind of a more clear and concise and transparent way for youth to move up through an organized system uh, to eventually, you know, build a good foundation. And, you know, we've always been hesitant to jump into some kind of like cause related thing or impose what we think is best on certain uh, causes. So, you know, even the beginning of what we do was done well, as far as we're concerned, as far as, you know, we were asked to help something, you know, we didn't go in and say, hey, this is how to do it. Um, so with that request, we started building out what is now Petricor, you know, an association of youth development pathways, community development, elite player pathways, uh, and the like. And, and I, I, I want to just get some clarification on that beginning part. It's like, when... And I want this especially for people that are thinking about this, this themselves, because you're in the States. And I want to say this. You're in the States. Your friend calls you. He says, do you fancy helping me? Mm -hmm. Most people would kind of not probably talk to him for, until that whole thing cooled down and that you could just sidestep it. But yeah. you just looked at it and you said, you know something? That could be something that we're interested in. Yeah, exactly. I mean... Our whole goal is to help create a model that works beyond us. And, you know, ideally it would be a temporary thing. We could help create a model that works. And then, you know, we're worked out of a job and the system works and the foundation's there. Uh, I mean, that's, you know, obviously easier said than done and takes a while. But I was more than happy to use, you know, my education in soccer and sports management, as well as my love for, you know, creating opportunities for kids to have a fun time playing the game, you know. So use all that and do what I can from the States and then occasional trips to, you know, build what we have going on. Let's, let's talk about that, that, how that feeling is, is developed for you with what you're, you're doing right now. Yeah. What is it that you're, so you're, you're now working in camera, the Cameroon. What have mm -hmm. you created there? Yeah. So basically the model is instead of starting an Academy, which is kind of a traditional model of a, you know, a football Academy, if you will, where you scout some of the best talent around, you know, you bring them to a training facility or some kind of camp and just work with a select group of individuals and then train them on and, you know, hopefully get them um, scouted or seen at tournaments or games or trials and things like that. 
um, which is a great model for a lot of people. We realized we, we had more strengths in developing kind of a wider network underneath all of that. So what we did was start an association where local clubs and academies can apply to be part of our association. And through that, they, they receive all kinds of benefits such as equipment, um, league development, uh, coaches development, coaches training, all kinds of things really to build up what they already are doing. We just wanted to support and empower who's already passionate about this in Cameroon. So we don't even have our own academy, if you will. We're more of a kind of a background organization to help build up who's already there and who has the dreams to take this forward. And, and how is this process, how long has this process taken so far? Yeah, so we started in 2017 and we grew fairly slow for the first few years to really test this model. And like, is this even going to work? You know, uh, how is it going to work? Kind of work out some of the kinks and really the past two years. So that was probably the first uh, two or three years. In the past couple of years, we've really started to become a little bit more public, um, you know, reach out to a bit more people, trying to find some more partnerships as we're, we're onto something that's working. So, you know, obviously next steps are, you know, growing and expanding and adding to the team, adding academies to what we're doing. Uh, yeah, and just some of those next steps. I've seen some of the pictures and there was, I, I saw one of those pictures that you're looking down onto all those players. Yeah, yeah. That must be, do you have to keep on pinching yourself to, to see, to realize what you've achieved so far? Yeah, it's unreal, right? Like, I mean, obviously numbers are a big deal and, you know, working with a lot of kids is amazing. Um, but some of my, I mean, to be honest, some of my best moments were individual moments with players where, you know, I saw them walk into the field and the facility and just to see their smile on their face as they're walking in, playing on the best pitch they've ever played on. I mean, it's just grass but that's better than anything they've ever played on. So, you know, seeing them walk in, you know, like jump in a game and just have the day of their lives, you know, like some of those moments are, are what it's for, for me. Like I could be done after seeing that. I was like, man, we were able to help provide that for that kid. You know, he'll never forget that. That's, that's what it's about for us. It looks like you've got it so professional as well. The kit, it looks fantastic. It, it just looks such a professional setup. It's, it's wonderful. And again, it was kids of all ages. Yeah. So we work primarily in, in that younger group. So we're working with U12, so under 12, and then they move up to our under 16 group. And, you know, we obviously have some older age groups and the, the professional divisions in Cameroon, but we really wanted to start young and develop those players kind of from the ground up. And so over the next three or four years, uh, you know, there's going to be some really good talent coming up as they've been playing together for a while. And and that's a good point to talk about right now is, is it that, that with the way that this is developing and, and Africa seems to be one of those big sleeping giants mm -hmm. that from a sports perspective that they're going to be huge in the future or when yeah. they've realized the potential. Because I know that I've spoken to quite a few Africans and, and they said sometimes that people just don't see the value in sports. But yeah. you're, it, the, the sports thing with Cameroon, where do you see the potential for Cameroon to, to, be, on the, to be under that spotlight is coming out as one of the best ones in, in, in Africa and, not, and the globe? Yeah, um, I mean, they're already a huge footballing nation. You know, they have some big names that have come out of there. Uh, there's a, I mean, again, there's so much potential, not just in Cameroon or West Africa, but all over. You know, we're, we're networking with a lot of groups like us that are doing similar things all around Africa. And we're right on the edge of some really big movement, I think. Um, I would say the biggest piece is creating that clear, uh, that clear pathway, you know, out or up or wherever the players are moving. Right now, it's a little bit complicated. It's a little bit corrupt. It's a little bit of a mess, right? So we're trying to create pathways that anyone can come in. They know they can trust people. They know the organization. And, and as you mentioned, you know, things looking good, we, we put a high priority on being professional and um, doing the best we can. So everything's organized, everything's tight. So, you know, you know what you're getting if you come down to Cameroon or you work with us down the road, uh, it's all done really well and above board. So as, as we continue to do that, hopefully, you know, all of our clubs then do that and it just kind of spreads throughout. And I think, you know, the next wave of African footballers is going to be through organizations, hopefully like ours, that create transparent um, and fair ways for players to move out. 
And, and that's a, a lot of responsibility. And that's a lot of kind of going backwards and forwards. How's your wife? Is your wife behind this? Is she, is she, does she come with you or does she get involved? Yeah, actually. So she's the one that did the video and all the photos you saw on the website. She's a photographer. So Whoa. Yeah, she's, she's great. She actually has been to Africa more than I have. She grew up in the Central African Republic right next to Cameroon. So, you know, she's probably more comfortable there than I am. So I'm, again, very fortunate to have a partner that's willing to jump in anywhere and do whatever. So yeah, she's great. And, you know, a big part of what the brand of Petrichor is today. And let's be honest, having a great photographer and a, somebody that could take films is exceptional, right? Oh my gosh, we're so <laughs> lucky, man. Like, yeah, I can't believe it. I, yeah, I need to give her a bonus, huh? <laughs> and it's, it, it really is to capture those moments. And, and with photography, it's like I, I sent you just beforehand, I sent you some pictures of, of me taking pictures of, yeah, of yeah. my youngest grandchild. And, yeah. and photography is that. You've got to take a, a hundred, a thousand, just to get that one picture that just yeah. says it all. It's Yeah, it, I know. To capture that moment, right? Like, and I, we'd love to somehow be able to give those back to the players, you know, whether it's on an actual printed photo or um some kind of digital file but you know for them to see their progress as well i mean their parents can put it up in their house and see a professional photo of their their player oh dear and 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 it, that's the thing with the podcast it's like the one thing i was telling you as well before the show is that we had a lady uh, called mariama and she's doing a master's in sports in qatar but she's from ghana and and she she tells your her stories now can you imagine then the one thing that i i i this is what i love about the podcast is that that she's she's no um she's no big athlete she's no but she wants to make a difference in sport and she's making a huge difference a really big difference and she's sacrificing her life to for others because it's not what she's doing for herself but what she can go back and do for africa and her lo local areas and the football players and the teams yeah. so it's a great one so i i sent her um i sent her a, a message to say you're on 6.4 thousand views right now now mm -hmm. in terms of podcasts and those type of things it's not huge but for somebody like it was just huge it was said i can't believe that i'm i've got so many people um looking at it. and so many people in ghana are looking at this this video and seeing exactly what she's doing yeah, it makes a difference be, right? yeah. yeah makes a difference it all makes a difference let's go to the um I, and I, I want to 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 touch on some points that there's other people i've got you know that you must get thousands of emails thousands of people connecting to you on linkedin mm -hmm. thousands yeah. of these things saying i want to get part of it i want to be a part yeah. of it i've got uh, players i've got these type of things yeah. it's like how do you how do you kind of in the beginning what do you have to prior prioritize with what was the things that you got involved in and said right okay this is the things that we've got to do yeah, as far as kind of building the organization or yeah. who we partner with. Which even one? just even just from that first time that you got off the plane and you looked at your wife and probably said, Are we what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. To be honest, I mean, for a while we uh we did a lot of that back end work. So so we we're you know getting all the tax compliance stuff together, meeting with, you know, sports lawyers. How does this all work down the road? Um, you know, writing all the requirements that our associations uh, members abide by. A lot of that was all that back end work. And obviously, you know, everything's in French there. So everything has to get translated and all that. So that's a whole nother, you know, issue. Um, and including some of our partners. Yeah. Is it, can you speak French? Yeah, I can speak. It's, like it's, it. kind, of, it's kind of street French, right? Like I, I played soccer in France for a year. So I learned on the field. Um, but other than that, you know. Not, I remember my street. I remember my, I'm sorry for cutting over, but I remember my street French. And it's when we went to, we were only there for two hours in, in France. And it's like, you're going up to people going, can you tell me the way to La de France? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the only French that I knew. <laughs> no, I get you. Like I'm, I'm comfortable leading, uh, you know, coaching seminars and stuff like that, but I don't want to do any TV interviews or meet with the minister or anything like that. I'd embarrass myself. Oh my word. But yeah. But so at the beginning, was there was there things that you said, these are the things that I want to work on, these are the things I didn't want to work on. Um and, and yeah. when you started seeing that progress, what was that like? Yeah, I would say um on the organizational side, it was more of, you know, we we have a model that's a bit flipped, you know, from that academy model as opposed to an association. So we really wanted to nail down, you know. Our, our model that's more inclusive, you know, bringing people in 
and focusing on those that are already putting the work in, in Cameroonian communities right now. So instead of placing people in those areas, we want to go find the people that are already passionate about it, already doing the work and helping them create something more sustainable. Um, so it was more of almost like a case study, if you will, like, how are we going to make this work? Because, you know, the industry is changing, tech is changing, the game is changing. There's so much changing really quick. We wanted to create something that um, some of those aspects could slide into really, really easily. And over those first few years, I would say, I mean, maybe more specifically to answer your question, finding partners and concepts of, of organizational growth that fit our mission and our values as far as you know, what are we about? Why are we doing it? Is this fair? Is this equal? Um, is this sustainable? What are our goals? So a lot of those had to fill, a lot of those had to filter through some of those aspects. Um, yeah. And I mean, we can go into that deeper if you want, but yeah, I, I would say we judged it based off of our kind of mission and values and why we were doing this. It, it must've been, did you have any kind of, did you have any barriers put in your way with people thinking who are you to come here and try to do these things? Yeah, I mean, there, there's all the little problems that you deal with. I mean, even our, uh, um, what's it called? Like the um, the association paperwork, you know, like that's got to get through a million different hands in the government. And it took it took years, you know, we're like, come on, just pass that through. It's easy, right? But some of, even some of that stuff just takes forever and you got to deal with that and um, the bureaucracy. But as far as, you know, people saying like, who are you to do this? Not yet, to be honest. We've got a really good relationship with uh, the federation, um, a lot of the bigger, the bigger name coaches in Cameroon. Um, you know, they love what we're doing because, in the end, I mean, it's it's to benefit the Cameroonian football community. And if if they took it over someday, that'd be amazing, right? Like we want to we want to just build a good foundation um, of youth development and pathways that can lead up to kids achieving their potential, whether that's you know, in the end results in the name of Petricor getting spread around or the Federation. What I mean, obviously we want people to know about us, but we're in it for the kids and their potential. So yeah, we really are collaborative and try to network with as many organizations there as possible. And again, I just want people to understand that, that some, and it could be one or two people who are in the similar position and they want to go and do this because they want to do it for the right reasons. Um, I want it, it, it's it's all doable. And it, it just yeah. proves when you're talking about this, you're laid back, you're saying, yeah, I kind of, I know it must've been a little bit more difficult, but you're saying, yeah, there must've been, and I'm sorry, cause I jump like this when I get excited. There must've no been so many people that just wanted to help you and push you along. Did you find that with the business? Yeah, there were a lot of people that, you know, were very encouraging, um, you know, from all over the world, you know, some growing up internationally, I'm connected to a lot of different people. And, you know, I mean, not to say it wasn't easy, you know, even the other day, I was just sitting there thinking like, you know, we're trying to figure out how to build our pitch. We're trying to partner with, uh, or we are partnering with a local school to build our pitch for the school on one hand, so they can have a pitch. And the secondary reason is so we can have kind of a home field for our academies to use. And I'm just sitting there like, man, how is this ever going to happen? You know, like, this is impossible. Like, I don't have this much money and who am I going to find to fund this? And I'm like, I know it's going to happen. And I know we're going to find those partners and find the right people. It's just a matter of, man, this is going to take forever just because I know there's kids just itching to play. Right. So um, it's a, it's a bit about speed as well. So um, yeah, it's not that it's all, you know, great. There are definitely hard times and, you know, there are definitely times where we question ourselves, you know, like, was this the right thing to do? You know, to be honest, we, we actually started with um, 15 academy members. It was 15 or 16, I think, um, you know, in 2017. And now we have five. <laughs> so, like, it's not easy, right? Like, so what happened is a lot of these academies realized, you know, the standards are too high. I can't do it. And we're not, I mean, yes, we're there to build, you know, foundational structures and all that. But we also don't mess around. If you can't follow the structure, you're not meant for this. And we, we definitely continue relationships with those academies. But what we did is kind of throw a wide blanket out there. And then we kind of, you know, the system naturally kind of whittles it down to the best coaches, the best academies that have the character to push through and have the players. And then we'll open enroll again for more academies and kind of hone that back down to the best of that group. 
So you're kind of continuously finding the best people. But I mean, that's not great for fundraising, right? It's like, oh yeah, we have 16 academies. And then a year later he calls you. So how are you 16 academies? Well, we only have five right now. So, but it's about the quality um, and, and, you know, and how that reflects our mission and, and us sticking to it. So yeah, it, I mean, you have to explain it a bit more, but you know, we're super happy with the people we have and, and the growth that's going to be coming in the future. The, the biggest problem that you've got with that is, is that when you are growing, right, if you've got too many things in, it's difficult to manage. So sometimes you have yep. to come back because you, you'll find all your weakness. And it's, it's what I like about sports and business is that, that you'll find all your weaknesses, too. So you'll, you'll look at those things and you'll start off thinking this is going to be amazing. But some things you, you'll find all the things that weren't you weren't that great at or somebody wasn't that great at. And and one thing I do know, with especially with my business, is getting that structure right and making making sure that there's procedures and there's things in place so that you can run it more better so that when you do get it right it grows exponentially it, you can kind of you can you can manage it because everybody fits into that structure yeah you got it exactly right there I mean that's that's what we went through you know we I mean I'm, I'm glad it happened you know otherwise we wouldn't have learned some of those lessons as far as you know more quality programs for a smaller group of coaches um, you know, we definitely learned who we were looking for, how it was going to work, um, how the accountability works, you know, with that many people. I mean, that was each academy had, you know, up to 200 kids. So that's, you know, several thousand kids each week, you know, playing in communities under our association. So, you know, that was a lot to manage. We were spread pretty thin. So now we kind of know to grow a bit more slowly and responsibly so we can serve the academies in our association the best that we can. No, that's that. That is it, it. It sounds perfect, and I I know Lucy Lucy Bincitu, She got in contact with me, and she said, "You just got to have a, have an interview interview with Paul because he's fantastic." Yeah, she's great, yeah. Thank you for that. I mean, shout out to her too. She's you know we were looking for someone to kind of help promote our name a bit around you know the African continent and some of the different. Uh, football outlets and you know she's been amazing so hopefully we can continue to work with her but yeah oh she's she's fantastic and i i remember interviewing her and, and what she does which is is just unbelievable and it, it's just it, it you i, I kind of say to people when people say oh the world's in a t in terrible shape not when there's people like you and, and um nusi when when you've got people like that then you've got good people that's going to look after that world just right as you said you've got five academies six academies 200 in each there's there's how many differences are you making right there and let's go on to the the students what do you what differences do you make for those do you believe yeah i mean i would say i mean the biggest thing that always comes to mind is is mainly from what i've seen you know on the ground there is just confidence building especially for the girls so we we've slowly or I guess kind of quickly, really in the last few years, become the one of the largest girls development initiatives in Cameroon. Um, so our program is growing very quickly on the girls side. And, you know, we're, we're trying to keep up with it. We're trying to get, you know, all the right people in place to, to provide for this level of talent of the girls. But I've seen a big difference in confidence, you know, in those girls playing, playing in front of more people, playing different, different teams, even playing with the boys. Um, it's so cool to see, you know, it's a bit countercultural, but as the women's game grows, you know, you can see decision-making happening better and easier and quicker that then bleeds over into, you know, regular family life and school and jobs and all that, you know, create an environment where kids can learn to make decisions in a game within structure, right? Like, you know, if you're a midfielder, you have your midfield, you know, third, that's your area, right? Like that's your spot. But within that, we encourage decision making. Like, if you want to make that pass, make that pass. That's that's your thing, right? Like, once you stray out of that zone too much and get in a little wild, then we'll, you know, we might say something. But what we want to encourage is decision making um, and confidence within parameters and within structure, because uh, you don't see that a lot with the kids um, in Cameroon. There's not a lot of, you know, individual decision making going on. They they usually wait for someone to tell them what to do. Uh, even, even in the coaching in the game of football, you know, you see a game and they're either getting yelled at for something or told what to do. We want to help coach in a way that allows space for them to make their own decisions and then learn from that because that's life, right? You know, like, you know, that kid's probably not going to become a professional, but he's going to learn how to make a decision and learn how to grow from a mistake that will take him through life. You know, that lesson.
You know what I like, and I, I, I was in the forces, and I, what I like is the discipline that it, sports give you, gives, gives you. I mm. always used to play rugby, and, and the, the, the thing that they used to say was controlled aggression, controlled aggression. You control, you channel that, that spirit, you channel that into your game. And, and there were so many things that it taught you as, as a young child that probably last with you for ages. Yeah. your lifetime in fact it'll always stay with you and as you said when you're building people with a team and you're giving them discipline and you're giving them the belief it's like I, as, a, as a consultant you go sometimes you go into places and you say I'm going to show you what how to make your business better there's not you can't do that because people would just close the doors down to look up and say what are you going to tell me about my business I've been here 20 yeah. years and you're going to tell me what to do it's like yeah. but can you imagine when you do that with kids it's like you've got to you've got to earn that respect you've got to kind of you've got to show them how to take those steps and then to to you're going to tell them what they're going to do and what they're how they're going to feel and once they start believing in you they'll they'll even listen even more and they'll grow even more as an individual mm -hmm. but the great thing is they'll give it to their te teammates as well they'll make sure that 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 community of their team of people around them are going to be on that level too and that's the, yeah, that's definitely. what i see with your stuff that it must be a wonderful wonderful feeling for you all yeah i mean that's that's a, a dream come true really when you start to see that work on the field and and hopefully in the communities you know we we try to develop as many relationships as we can with the players families um because as these kids start with us you know they're 11 year olds, 10 year olds, sometimes they're really young. So we really want to create strong relationships with the families, uh, one for trust and then safety and all that, you know, so, you know, have them come out to the field, create more of a support around the youth team. Uh, and then we get to know that kid and his family the whole journey through uh, to ultimately, you know, hopefully prepare that player for a good trial somewhere or, you know, his, his debut on a first team, whatever that might look like, you know, we, we see a lot of lack of the back end support, if you will, for players that, you know, aren't prepared well, they might have all the talent in the world, but once they get in a certain position and don't have that support network behind them, you know, eventually that's going to crumble, you know? And so we're trying to kind of build up that player on a more holistic level, I guess. And, you know, a lot of that is relationship and trust over the years to really build those decision-making, um, aspects and confidence building and, and just the relationship with the parents too, that trust. Look, I, I look back to my time when I was a young kid and the, the people that stand out in my mind is people like yourself that, that, that give you the belief that you can do it, you can achieve it. And I'm 54 now, but it's like with the kids, you've got such a, a role to play because even with my kids, they're not always going to listen to you. Even when they get older, they're not going to, they're going to do what they want to do. But if yeah. you can put something in, I'm, I'm going to kind of, I'm not worthy. If you're going to help me with my, my parenting skills, I'm not going to throw it all onto you. But if you can, if you can in your way, put some discipline into their lives, put some kind of structure in, in the ways that's going to build them for, they may not, not, they may not be footballers, but they may be somebody, somebody special because they taught you mm -hmm. taught them all the things that they should be respecting. And that's a really wonderful feeling. Where do you want to go from here? So you're, you're kind of, you're at this stage now, what's, what's your next ambitions? What's your next focus? Yeah, I would say, you know, a couple of things are, you know, really, continue to grow the girls program. You know, it's a, it's a great time in history. I mean, it's about time for a lot of that to grow. So um, we're really excited about providing more and more opportunities to, to uh, the girls side, um, all the way down through, you know, the U12 level up to, you know, division one in Cameroon you know, and beyond hopefully. But, you know, our next steps would be um, create more of a league, a more developed league for youth in Cameroon. So right now, there's not much that exists. There's, uh, there's tournaments uh, often, you know, they vary on the size and importance, but uh, often teams will just train for whatever, you know, three months, six months, and then they'll go play the tournament and that's it. And maybe a few months later, they might get back together and start training again. Uh, but we really want to create kind of a league with, you know, a season, you know, just make this a little bit more organized. It doesn't have to be any more serious, um, but just create a regular season where players are playing more often day in, day out, getting to know their coaches, their teams. Um, and that that's on two levels. We split what we do into two ways. One is our community side. Um, and the other one is elite. So the community side is more based on providing free 
programs and weekend tournaments for kids, um, creating leagues and really just um, excitement around the game and organizing that in communities. We also do a lot of free, you know, like different coaches, education courses, giving away equipment, um, kind of the community development side. And then the elite level would be, you know, some of the best players in our programs have the opportunity to move up, move up the ranks through one of our clubs. And, you know, the goal would be to plan those higher divisions. And, you know, those would be the players we would have a lot of profiles for, you know, we're keeping all the data on those players as they grow and move through their career. Um, but, you know, they're talented, man. You Like, I'm, I'm not worthy to coach it. You know, we, we need some good coaches to come over there and even within Cameroon to really take these kids uh, to their highest potential. You know, they're, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old and just amazing. You know, like the, the natural talent, you know, the, we, we've got a few that have that drive, you know, that, that difference where you clearly have it, you know. Uh, so if you can stick with it. So really trying to provide... Uh, the adequate pathway and networks and partners to give that player the best shot. So yeah, I'd say kind of on the community side, you know, building that community interest and then on the elite side, providing the best opportunities we can uh, for the players that are doing really well. I, I, I'm going to try to introduce you to a, a few more people that would, would, would really like to get involved in some way. Um, I, yeah. Um, train effective is one train effective.com. Have a look at it. It's, it's pretty special. I'm going to get you in, involved with Nick and see how they can, they can run this program with, um, with, because he, he's teamed up with one of his big investors is um, Rio Ferdinand. And okay. um, they've done some amazing things just with an application. I don't know if, if that's going to be possible, um, yeah. but they've got a great, tra tra great training application where oh, um, yeah. to the highest level, and what they've done is, was it was it specifically for this to go into places in, in Africa to be able to uh, kind of help and develop. So I'll, I'll put you in touch with him because he's a great, a great, 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 great guy. So, yeah, but is there great. any, is there any other people that you're looking for right now that to kind of come in and, and help? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, like everyone else, right? We're we're looking for funding partners. You know, our uh, we have a bit of a you know sustainability plan, so. In the next few years, we're hoping that this model kind of turns over and works on its own. But to get to that spot, you know, we need some help with building the pitch, you know, with growing our programs, even funding trips for these girls. You know, our, we have a bit of a dream to take, um, to take the youth girls to the Women's Africa Cup in Morocco next fall and host like a mini girls tournament alongside of the, the women's tournament. Uh, so how cool that would be to host a youth women's or a youth girls tournament alongside of the game, and then hopefully take them to a few games to show them, you know, who are your role models, you know? And um, so, you know, help with some of that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I would say really just funding at this point, we're, um, we're working with a few different uh, quality sports agencies as far as, you know, how to set up the player pathway, uh, who's looking for what types of players. But um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I always love chatting with whoever and however we can help as well. We'd love to connect anyone we can. Uh, a lot of people have helped us out over the years and whatever we can share, we would love to offer that to others as well. Um, so yeah, whatever that might look like, we're always up for a conversation. We always say yes until something doesn't work out. So, yeah. you know, like keep the intros going and we'll connect to uh, our end as much as possible as well. I'm I'm hoping for this COVID to be be under control by next year. If that's the case, yeah, yeah. then then what we'll do is we'll put a trip together where I could take you around to um, where we did for some students from London, but we'll do some with with um, some Cameroon of your 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 academy um, players and all that kind of stuff. And we'll bring a group over and we'll take them around to all the stadiums and all the training facilities here. And yeah, and someone see. what is that? I I can't remember who it was. Someone talked to us about that there was a youth tournament where we were going to potentially be like a, like a guest team or something like, but it was, you know, right as all this COVID stuff was going down. So it was all put on pause, but I mean, that would be, that'd be a dream for these kids. Right. You know, like, can you imagine? Unbelievable. Yeah, I can and only they, imagine. And they earn it, right? Like they're working hard. These kids are, you know, they're going to school, they're going to training, they're playing high level games, our elite teams, these kids are earning it, right? So it would be great to give them a reward like that and provide that opportunity. Payback, Paul, payback. And that's what you're doing. I, I kind yeah. of, I, I, can't, I can't thank you enough for coming on to the show to, to kind of share with you your story. 
um, it's an incredible story. I, I kind of, I, I just want people to realize that anybody can do it. Not saying that you're just an anybody, but sometimes yeah. it's only the decision that you've got to make with yourself to say, I'm going to do this and look at what you've done. Look at the things that you've done. So what I'm saying to people is that go out there, go and do what Paul's done, because there's some things that you can do in your life that's going to make a huge, huge difference. And I bet you're going to make a difference to Cameroon in, in the um, lady sports. That's for sure. Yeah, thanks. No, I, I totally agree. I mean, you're right. I'm, I am nobody, but anyone can do it, right? Like, just take that next step. And there's, it might not seem like it, but people are willing to help out just like they did to us. So, I mean, I'm always open to an email or call to help however I can if someone just needs that extra encouragement. So definitely I'm can happen. And I'm so sorry if that meant, I, I didn't mean that you're nobody. I mean, no, sometimes, I know, you're good. I, sometimes you, you just, you've just got to make that. You don't, don't even think about who you are and what, what you're doing. Just go and do it. Make that decision, feel the fear and go and do it anyway. And you never know the magic that's going to happen. And I want you to finish up now. What's the biggest, what's it like with those kids when you see that joy on their faces? Oh my gosh. Like I, I, I mentioned it briefly earlier, but I was like, it could all be done right now. I could die right now and I would be content. Like to know that I helped create something that provided a moment of just bliss for a kid, you know, that, that he otherwise might not have had. Um, and there's so much work that goes into it from our team in Cameroon. They're the ones that make most of this happen. So the, the ability to witness those moments is something I understand is, you know, rare. And I definitely appreciate them and, and soak those up. So those moments could, could be it, you know, to imagine not stopping there, but to be able to provide that for thousands more kids in different communities around the continent um, is a dream. And that pool, I can't finish this show in a better way. You just summed it all up. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for spending the time with us and please keep on doing what you're doing. You're making a massive difference with you and your team. Yeah. Thanks so much, Steve. I really appreciate it. I had a great time today. Thank you so much indeed. Uh, and Great. enjoy your trip in a couple of weeks' time. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did. You've heard me say this a hundred times, but I'll say it another thousand times. When you've got people like Paul that's going out to make a huge difference in this world, I tell you, I, I want to hear that story. I want to get impulsed by it. I want to keep on doing what I, I'm doing. And with Paul, I'm always going to have a show. So thanks very much for joining us today. We've had a wonderful time. Hopefully see you next week. Bye for now. Here at In The Game, we are so proud to be associated with Incubate. Incubate is a startup hub which offers businesses and entrepreneurs a complete set of services and tools to get their businesses up and running. You have to get in contact with them if you're a startup in Qatar. They're in Palm Tower on the 29th floor. Everyone, thanks for listening. But please make sure you give us a comment or like us on your favorite podcast app.